Uh, all right, so starting with the RGB side of the payload, because this is a mapping focused drone, even though you mentioned that there's the vegetation aspect that makes it multispectral. Uh, what is special about the, the RGB capture uh, camera and what, what can you assume you can, uh, what can you create or what kind of data can you get uh, from this payload? Sure, great question. So if we look at the Phantom 4 multispectral payload, that was just a small sensor, two megapixels. Now we're going up to even bigger than what the standard Phantom have at the one inch sensor. Now we're at a four thirds inch sensor, 20 megapixels. And what that's gonna unlock is, we always had to battle between spatial resolution and spectral accuracy. And now we're gonna be able to combine the two by maintaining that four thirds sensor you're gonna get really high GSD on these maps, as well as really clean imagery, because it's a mechanical shutter, it's capturing every 0.7 seconds, and so you're gonna have really good imagery to run machine learning on for analysis, for visual, but then you're not sacrificing the, the, the multispectral side. So since it's the same camera that we made for the M3E for mapping, that thing is a mapping machine. And uh, uh, two of the, the specs that are shown here that I think could be dug into a little deeper is the mechanical shutter component. Uh, how important do you think it is to have a drone with a mechanical shutter versus a, you know, a rolling shutter? Sure, we talk about it quite a bit in the survey world, maybe less in the agricultural world, but it's just as important in the ag world. When a lot of the analysis we're doing, we're flying over even conventional fields or the plots, that micro plots that we're looking at, most of that data is sub inch accurate. And so if you're utilizing a rolling shutter, you're adding distortion in there. And that can be a cause of miscounting a couple plants coming up with the wrong analysis and then you have the wrong insights. And so mechanical shutter, higher levels of accuracy. And then the middle, okay. minimum shoot photo interval, I know you're getting there. Um, that's greatly improved. That's basically allowing you to map much lower. So if you're looking at high GSD for counting plants or understanding weeds, we're still flying at that low altitude at 30 mile an hour because we're capturing at 0.7 seconds. And so we're able to cover much more ground and still capturing much higher GSD. Kyle, in the past, you've been able to read my mind, but that wasn't my other one. The other one was the, the ground control point free mapping. Is sure. it? And this is this is like ignorance. This is me just not knowing. But if you added ground control points to this sort of work, is it going to improve on what the RTK module can do? Like, can you get even better if you did use ground control points, or is that you wouldn't use them because this is this is going to get you all that you need? Another good question. Drone Deploy is actually releasing an article in the next week or two, and we did a collaboration with them on the Mavic 3 Enterprise series. We found that ground control points can and typically do add a little bit more accuracy, but it's very marginal for the amount of work that's added. But mm. with RTK on board, now all you have to do is lay out a couple checkpoints and you're good to measure against the accuracy. So it takes away a lot of the workload that you'd have in the field, as well as laying ground control points in the middle of a field in nine foot tall corn, really hard to do in the center. So it just removes a lot of the work. For sure, okay, yeah, and again, that was just because I know that ground control points in the past have been extremely uh, almost necessary to get high accuracy, and so I didn't know if, if it still made that improvement, so I appreciate the answer on that one. 